This is Fujifilm X-T2, and this is Fuji X-T100. They both have similar retro style look. They both have 24 megapixel sensor, but this one, Fuji X-T2, has X-Trans sensor, and this Fujifilm X-T100 has a Bayer sensor. The first day I got this little camera, the first thing I want to figure out is, does this Bayer sensor work well with Lightroom? So let's find that out. Before we get started, for those of you who want to buy Capture One license, you can save 10% by using coupon code AMBCAI. I will put information and the links in the description below, so feel free to check it out. Now, let's head over to the computer and check out some photos. All right, now we are in Lightroom, and I captured a series of photos. Um, I captured one, two, three, four, five, six, seven photos with Fuji X-T2, and the seven photos with Fuji X-T100. And the only change I did is to remove the default sharpening setting. I basically moved this amount to zero. That's the only change I did on these photos. So now let's take a look at ISO 200. So this one is uh, Fuji X-T100, and this one is Fuji X-T2. I captured both photo at uh, f4 and ISO 200, and uh, the shutter speed was set to auto. So uh, surprised to see that Fuji X-T100 tends to overexpose compared to Fuji X-T2. You can see the shutter speed. It's 0.6 second on Fuji X-T2, but 1.1 second on Fuji X-T100. And now let's uh, zoom in to 100%. Oh, that's 100%. Loading, loading, Lightroom, come on. Come on, Lightroom. All right. So just looking at the shadow. Uh, so without the default sharpening, so the noise pattern looks kind of similar. Uh, let me go to the develop module. Let me just bring this one stop brighter. Just try to match the exposure. Okay, now let's do again. On the left, this is Fuji X-T2. On the right is Fuji X-T100. Now, let me go to develop module again. Select the Fuji X-T2 file. I'm, I'm gonna go to details module, set sharpening amount to be 100. Ooh, you can start seeing those uh, warming artifacts right away. And this is Fuji X-T100, which has a Bayer sensor amount 100 as well. And you can see Wormy Artifact as well. Now, let's go back to library, select these two files and compare again. All right, on the left hand side is Fuji X-T100, which has a Bayer sensor. And on the right hand side is Fuji X-T2, which has X-Trend sensor. And if you look at the shadow area, so, hmm. I think it's a, a little bit surprised that I, I think I prefer Fuji X-T2. I think I prefer the noise pattern on Fuji X-T2, which has the x trend sensor. I think the, uh, I don't know, I think the Wormy artifact is a little bit more obvious on Fuji X-T100, which has a uh, Bayer sensor. But to be honest, they are very similar. I mean, I don't see one is definitely better than the other. Also, one thing to point out is I use auto white balance for uh, each camera. So the one on the left hand is Fuji X-T100. I think it's a little bit too red, too pink, too magenta. And the one on the right is Fuji X-T2. I think X-T2 does a better job at white balance. Now I'm going to do the same thing to um, ISO 6400. So this one is ISO 6400 captured by Fuji X-T2. Go to development, amount 
set to 100 and this guy here is Fuji XT100 and ISO 6400 amount set to 100 so again looking at the shutter speed it's 1 30th of a second and the Fuji XT2 is 1 5th of a second so almost the one stop brighter so I am gonna raise exposure on this one so how much do I need to raise uh, 0.6 well, actually, let's do 0.75. Let's see. All right, the histogram shows they're at least similar. I would say just similar. Now, I'm going to compare these two. Let's say compare. Loading, Lightroom is loading loading forever come on Ooh, this guy oh I'm at two to one or all right back to one to one okay this guy is not loading yet come on Lyrum do something please I beg you come on Lyrum do something all right now there it is all right on the left hand side is Fuji XT2 which has a X transensor, and uh, right hand side is Fuji XT100, which has a Bayer sensor. So they are both at ISO 6400 f4, and the shutter speeds are different. But I raised the exposure on Fuji XT2 a little bit, and based on these results, I think I prefer Fuji XT100 at this time. I think I prefer noise pa pattern on the right hand side. Last but not least, let's do a Lightroom versus Capture One comparison. In Lightroom, I set the amount to 100, and in Capture One, I did something a little bit uh, extreme. Basically, I removed all noise reduction and set amount to the largest amount, which is 1000 in Capture One. And now let's compare these two. So right now I am in Lightroom. This is amount 100 sharpening and give Lightroom a little bit time to load. Loading, still loading. Okay. Um, let's do 2 to 1 so we can see more clearly. So this is ISO 200 in capture, uh, in Lightroom, sorry, in Lightroom and uh, amount is 100. And please notice this area. And let's go to capture 1. Go to 2 to 1 ratio. And remember in Capture 1, this is the largest sharpening amount, 1000. And in Lightroom, it's about 2 thirds of the largest amount. Again, this is Lightroom. And go back to Capture 1. This is Capture 1. So overall, I think Capture 1 appears much more smoother. Uh, in this for for this photo this is ISO 200 the same photo Lightroom and capture one so this appears capture one is much better now let's move on to the next let's say let's pick this is ISO 800 give Lightroom a little bit time to load and this is 2 to 1 remember the 2 to 1 scale ISO 2 ISO 800 F4, this is a Lightroom. This is a Lightroom. Now let's go to Capture One. ISO 800, and this is Capture One um, at largest amount, largest sharpening amount. Lightroom here, and a Capture One here. So at ISO 800, I still prefer the results in Capture One. Now let's move on to higher ISO. Let's say ISO 6400 and Lightroom needs to load. Come on. All right, this is ISO 6400 sharpening amount 100. This is how it looks like in Lightroom. And we are going to Capture One. Boom, this is uh, the 6400 in Capture One. It looks really bad in Capture One this time. 
uh, looks like it's uh, a lot more noisy compared to Lightroom. This is a Lightroom at sharpening amount 100. And this is Capture One, ISO 6400 at largest sharpening amount. So if we turn the sharpening amount down a little bit, maybe two thirds of the uh, largest amount at, the, at this scale. Now let's compare again. This is uh, Capture One, and this is the Lightroom. Uh, notice the uh, noise pattern. This is the Lightroom, and this is Capture One. So I think in terms of uh, noisiness, the noise, I think uh, Capture One and the Lightroom are similar at ISO 6400, but I Maybe it's just my personal taste. I prefer the noise pattern in Capture One compared to Lightroom. All right, as you can see, the Bayer sensor from Fujifilm X-T100 also produce wormy artifact in Lightroom. So that tells me the wormy artifact problem is not caused particularly by X-Trans sensor. And to me, I think maybe the problem is the .raf RAF file format. Maybe Lightroom doesn't know how to handle RAF format. Uh, because if you bring the RAF RAF files to Photoshop and use Unsharp Mask to sharp to sharpen your photos, then you can get pretty good results without wormy artifact. Even though uh, Photoshop is also Adobe's product. Also by comparison in Capture One, I don't have this wormy artifact problem at all. So that's why I think uh, there's defi definitely something special or let's say something different about the .raf format But Lightroom doesn't know how to handle that very well. All right guys, that's a quick update from me today I hope you enjoyed it and if you like my video, please hit the thumbs up button below And if you are not subscribed already, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel All right guys, I hope you have a fantastic day and I hope to see you next time. Bye